Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show. I am your host, June Archer. This is the Winner's Circle, and I have the amazing, the talented, this guy's an icon, over 200-plus videos, hip-hop, R&B, Jay-Z, Missy Elliott, Grammy Award winning. Please give it up. Dave Myers, how are you doing today, brother? I'm good. How are you? <laughs> oh, man. It, it, nice gives, it gives me joy. Uh, we grew up on what I believe is one of the the dopest time periods of music, hip-hop and R&B in the 90s. You had your hand in it. How did it feel to be a curator of things that came to life by putting your eye and your talent to it and bringing it to life for those who love music? Uh, how does it feel? Uh, you mean at that time specifically or just yeah. in general as a career? Yeah, or, I would say uh, in that time period, but also in hindsight. Yeah, I think that, um, God, I, I, uh, I don't even know where to begin. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it's been a rare, a rare pleasure from where I sit. I don't think I necessarily always look at it as a pleasure, but in hindsight, uh, to be trusted uh, with such a wide variety of artists and to be uh, able to express such a wide variety of visions um, and 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 uh, and to be uh, associated with such a wide variety of taste um, uh, during that period and even currently um, is is just been a it's it's a very satisfying retrospective when I think about it or when my wife celebrates me and puts on my old little Wayne videos or my you know it's a sort of um, it's 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 interesting actually to rewatch that stuff now uh, through her lens because she she we weren't together at that time and she was a fan of those videos and and so it's uh but but when I was going through it I think I always felt like uh, I was a soldier for the cause of of just you know expressing what an artist is trying to express and um, that looks different depending on who the artist is um, and so and I each each artist I've ever worked with. Um, has always had something an X factor that makes them interesting, and 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 it ha they've had it usually, uh, you know, aside from a couple of you know, tough projects, but usually the artists are, um, you know, uh, are curators of culture as well, or they have something to express to culture, or they're about to influence influencers of culture, I should say, and so to be able to curate the the, the accompaniment that goes with their music, um, and and have it, you know, kind of represent them you know um uh it was it was a really just a, it was wonderful i mean i i really miss the 90s in that sense the artists were so much fun they they uh but but i mean i'm having fun still like you know um so i i i guess i'm not as nostalgic i uh, uh because i'm still in it <laughs> um and and still getting to express with wonderful artists you know like jen obviously but you know also had you know, recent runs with Travis and Kendrick. And and, and so it's just, it's just sort of, you know, Ariana, you know, like there's just been beautiful voices uh, throughout all the eras. And um, maybe I'm getting a little too general. <laughs> <laughs> when you when you think about having fun with artists and 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 we're talking about Jennifer Lopez, J-Lo, uh, you had the opportunity to work with This Is Me Now, the musical, uh, and then we're going to be talking about the greatest love story never told. How did it feel to work with Jennifer Lopez after all these years to where we are now starting to see her vulnerability in terms of her journey and her showing it to her, her audience and her fans? And you had the part of bringing that to life once again. How was that for you? Yeah, I mean, I think what what I go through is maybe a little different than sort of the moment that's being created by her. Uh, so for me, um, you know, I have sometimes I feel a strange relationship with the artist because it's like you get to know them and then they're gone. And, you know, I'm like in Jen's case, I hadn't seen her for 20 years, but like but the, I created five videos with her back in the day that are still like I saw her perform the one with LL recently and, and on stage and she was saying that it was like one of her biggest hits. I'm like, God, I didn't even know that. Like, like, how do I not know that I did the video? Like, I don't, I don't get to emotionally uh, celebrate all the time or, or walk, walk the full emotional ride with an artist. So I, I kind of feel left out uh, a lot of times. And so this, this, um this whole year and a half with Jen has been very therapeutic in that sense, because it's uh it's validated that even though we haven't spent much time together, that she still did like me as a as a creative voice, 
And not only that, she chose me to express the most personal moment that she's ever wanted to express. And that I was in such synchronicity with her, with what I wanted to express and the way that we kind of came together and played in the same sandbox reminded me, kind of reminded me a lot of my early Missy days, you know, just like, um, you know, just, you know, me and Missy always used to play in the sandbox and, 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 and Jen and I have that relationship where she was the only one who got instantly anything that I came up with, you know, and, and I got everything she was trying to say, even when the, the close, the close collaborators around us were like, you know, scratching their heads or worried or whatever, which uh, the documentary captures a little bit of um, <laughs> only a little bit. There was a lot, but the documentary is like the, the, the part that's allowed for the world. Um, and, and so that, that was really beautiful to watch her hold herself graceful through all those moments uh, to be uh, someone that she would look at anytime there was a problem and, and with, with kind uh, partnership eyes um, that was, it was fulfilling on, on for me personally. Uh, it's a life memory that that's it, that uh, that I'll get to carry with me. And I mean, all the way to to the premiere when she she uh, asked me to introduce her. I'm not sure if I was more blown away by that moment and the way that she was looking at me before I walked out on stage, uh, or the experience of creating the film. Like it was just such a. I I don't think I've had the opportunity to have bold connections with with artists in that way. And, and so, you know, Jen trusting me at that level and including me in her life, you know, was, was very special for me. So take me through the, I, oh yeah, sorry. Take me through the creative process. Were, were you able to take any liberties uh, cinematographically um, in this project? I mean, the whole film to me is a liberty. Um, uh, I, I took the real life stories Jen was sharing with me and uh and sort of wove it into a, an essence of jen so everything's a metaphor um you know uh i tried to capture all the crayon colors of what i think jennifer lopez means you know from the swaggy side to the dancing side to the vulnerable side to the acting side to the humorous side to her beloved nate her beloved self-deprecating marriage you know the the the, the consummate bride like we're, we're the whole movie is made up of to me what she shared and what I see her as, you know, is this this kind of tour de force of all kinds of flavors, if you will, and 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 spinning that all into an abstract story. Uh, I, I, it's a rare circumstance uh, that um, I've heard her talk about the film as as you know as if she she intimately imprints on every single moment in the film, and you would think that that would eclipse me being able to do that, but it's what what was really fascinating to me is I look at every single minute of the film and see me and she sees her and it really is indicative of our partnership, you know, that, that we both got along so well and, and that, that we were able to create together and trust together, um, you know, in, in, in a final result that we're both really proud of. So like, I guess and that answer your question. Absolutely. Maybe. Absolutely. <laughs> When you talk about colors, Dave, you had the opportunity to work with so many amazing artists between This Is Me and The Greatest Love, Fat Joe, uh, there's so many names. How were you able to make your magic happen when you talk about different colors and personalities and swag to mesh it all together to make this beautiful project at the end of the day? Um, how inspired were you to work with all of these artists? Um. Well, I think the one that was there in my original pitch was Fat Joe, because uh, uh, that's an example of taking one of her perfume, her, her, one of the things that Jen means to me is that, that, that I, I sort of always knew they were close friends. Um, and so I just thought there was sort of a meta-ness of making Fat Joe therapy. I thought it would be fun for Fat Joe fans to see him spitting, spitting some serious stuff, telling Jenny about like, you know, it's like it kept it, it kept it street in a way. You know, right. even though it was in the formality of therapy in this sort of fancy office or whatever, but I just thought that the, it, 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 it would, you know, I just, I don't know, it was, it was the right, you know, it was the right, you know, it was the right kind of partnership, you know, I mean, anybody could have played the therapist, but the idea that Fat Joe did meant more to Jen's brand to me, you know, and, and that, that, it, that it celebrated who, who are her friends and then think the Zodiacs represent the power, I mean, well, they, they represent what they represent in the movie, but as far as working with that swath of, of, of celebrity, I think that that was, I'm very proud of the combination of people that are there because they represent what I know Jen to be. Uh, she's sort of, to me, like uh, 
you know, I, my experience with her has been very much like she's great Gatsby of, of, of our generation. Um, uh, even just seeing who shows up to her parties, it's just, it blows me away. Like, like the, the, the amount of, of, of different walks of life, if you will, from young to old, from, from music to actors, like it, it, it's just such a beautiful Gatsby-like energy around, around how she celebrates her life and how she, and how and and people that want to celebrate with her, and then what in the documentary captures a little bit of this too. But the, all those zodiacs as they came were, it was really lovely to watch. You know, they were all usually showing up as friends of Jen, um, and so it was beautiful to watch Jen inter interact with them when they would come to set. She was hosting them almost like at a party, and uh, it was just a beautiful thing to kind of watch and be validated, I guess, that that yes, we're doing what we're doing here is correct. These people are truly connected to Jen and what she's working on. And, and that, that truth, you know, the, the humor of the Zodiacs was, you know, that's one thing and, and what it serves for the story. But the the truth of that collection of names, I think, is really uh, in a way just as important for what it does for Jen's brand and how it captures this moment. Uh, almost as a yearbook of where she's at in her life. Lastly, Dave, when you look back upon your journey, and we just finished and continue to celebrate 50 years of hip hop, your contribution, how do you feel about hip hop as evolution and where we are today? You know, I, I was so mad because uh, Slick Rick reached out and hit, uh, we were trying to do Mona Lisa that never got a video. And uh, we were trying to do, we couldn't find the financing, but we wanted to do that as a celebration of the 50 years. Um, but uh, but that didn't happen. Um, so well, where where is hip hop today? Um, I'm not gonna speak from the lens of the music itself that I think you would wanna talk to, you know, hip hop artist or whatnot to, you know, but from the lens of what I get to do, I feel like, um, you know, and there's a value to what the nineties was, <laughs> um, but, but it was a um it was like a, a limited vision um you know it was a lot of parties and a lot of clubs and a lot you know there was a limited scope to what hip hop was allowed to express um i feel like today hip hop is infinite um you know it it, it it's permeated the entire world uh you know whether whether it's a positive or negative in certain people's minds i think the influence it's had and and you're starting to see that reflected in other kinds of musics whether that's appropriation or not, again, I'll save that for Chuck D to, to tell you. Um, but but to see it so successful when I grew up being told it was going to be stomped out, you know, um, or not being told by by I mean by MTV, you know, Snoop would always say, you know, like you know the the, the hip hop artists that I was around were were fighting to be seen, um, uh, and 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 stretch the ceiling, and I feel like it's fascinating to me. And again, I'm not trying to get into the nuance of the, what's considered hip hop and what's not as as according to Nas or Jay. But if 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 you accept um, that, you know, little Nas is a rapper or or um, or that, uh, you know, Tyler uh, and, and Kendrick and, you know, like when you look at the, you know, the, the voices now, you can go any which direction you want, you know, and 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 there's an audience for you. And 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 to be able to stretch in those ways and to express in those ways, I think is so beautiful for the 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 and the potential is huge because it's always been a culture moving you know format, and so now that it can move so many cultures with so many topics and so many uh, so much unapologetic boldness, it, I just think that's why it's become the sort of uh, the leader. I mean, it's so funny to me when they play hip hop in like you know Downey commercials or something. It's just, it's just exactly. like you know. I remember when, like you know, God, man, maybe 15 years ago, they were like, we went, we had Luda in a in a cell phone commercial, and the agencies and clients were studying his lyrics. Oh wait, but there's bad lyrics. So like now they would fucking die to have you know, and they do. I just did a Luda commercial, and I was remembering that, like, oh wow, look how the world's changed. You know, now all the corporations need the validation of hip hop, and you know every, and so I just think that. You know where it's going to go is is in the uh, you know to the point that I get called. It's my responsibility, and the, the but but for the young you know uh, uh, shoulders that, that that it stands on, I think it, 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 I don't know where it's going to go next. But I just think that the sky's the limit, you know, and 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 I think hip hop's also evolved thanks to uh, you know not just music, you know, it's a culture, you know, it's it's all with with Pharrell doing you know what he's doing and Kanye doing, he's you know like like the the brand influence and being. Um, 
in control of the brand is is fascinating to watch that grow. Like I, that that that's probably the most fascinating because I was there with Kanye and Jay and all those in the early days and and to watch them like become billionaires and and how they did it and how they like you know bought their liquors and their art and their and their various things is 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 um I don't know it's it's just a really it's a really beautiful I would I, you know I I I would like to do some sort of dedication to you know someday uh I'm, I'm brewing like what what could i do that would celebrate all of what i'm trying to say here but you know anyway I'm, i know I'm really you, i know you will do it and i gotta say this brother myers thank you for handling the culture responsibly um from where you sit uh you are our icon i thank you we thank you continue to do what you're doing ladies and gentlemen that is dave myers please check out this is me now and of course the greatest love story never told. He is the iconic Dave Myers. If you don't know him, you've been under a rock for the past 20 years. I am June Archer. This is the Winner Circle. Thank you so much for tuning in. Peace.